Who Who comes and uh, cleans all this up? Uh, you do. That's the that's the fun part about uh, home <laughs> <That's not. laughs> <laughs> That was not in the contract. Stuck at home, missing the bar. Welcome to Home Bar Star. I'm Sean Evans. I'm a spirits journalist, and we're going to bring a little bit of the bar to you. Each episode, awesome mixologists will compete over video chat to help a guest make the best cocktail using only the ingredients found around their house. They'll provide the mixers. We'll provide the booze. This week, we're using Johnny Walker Black, thanks to Diageo, who sent a bottle to all of our participants. Diageo has a great tips from home program where it'll donate to charities based on you simply sharing a cocktail photo. More on that in a bit, but first, let's meet our guest. Say hello to Steve Turner. Uh, oh. A couple of fun facts about Steve. Uh, he's a book designer. He lives in Jersey City. I'm and sure. he recently cut his own hair, prompting his friends to tell him he looks like Beaker from The Muppets. Thank you for that wonderful intro and not at all insulting. Steve, you're, uh, you're a gin man. Uh, what's your go-to drink? Uh, lately, it's really been gin on the rocks, and I like uh, Uncle Val's, which is like a botanical gin. That's sort of my go-to. Um, if I'm feeling like uh, I want to do more than just pour gin on the rocks, I'll add, you know, lemon, a little twist. Sometimes I'll do like a dirty martini. But pretty much any way you can make gin, I'll, I'll drink it. And how do you feel about scotch? I like it. I don't often drink it. Um, anytime I have it is usually like, you know, somebody wants to do a shot of whiskey or something, which I know is not the same, but I, I don't typically make uh, scotch drinks myself, though. so this would be good. Well, let's get you a Johnny Walker cocktail. Let's meet our mixologists uh, from Jersey City. Also, we've got Anthony, the Professor Baker. Uh, Anthony's a cocktail educator. Anthony's worked with the Aviary, European Bartender School, and the Liquor Lab. Anthony, how are you? We're pretty good, thank you. And from Brooklyn, New York, we've got Cody Goldstein. Cody's the founder of Muddling Memories, a mixology firm that works with top restaurants like Toro Loco and Catch. Cody, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm awesome. I can't wait to see what you guys have whipped up. Um, and we didn't plan this, but I understand that you guys know each other, Cody and Anthony. Yeah. I didn't we go way back. I didn't know Cody was coming here until I saw the email just now. I was like, oh, Cody's going to be there. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so here's how this is going to work. Steve gave us a list of the ingredients that he has in his fridge and his pantry. Uh, we gave those to Anthony and Cody and told him to come up with the best drink. Um, each one of them is going to walk Steve through how to make that drink. Uh, hopefully Steve can live up to the, uh, the, the pressure. And uh, at the end... Steve's going to give you a sample, and then he's going to tell us which beverage he would most want to order a second round of, and that'll help us declare a winner. Let's start with Anthony. Anthony, what are we making? I made something that would kind of ease you into the whole scotch game, and this is going to be called Johnny Walker meet Tom Collins. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take simple syrup, and I want you to measure out half an ounce of simple syrup into your jigger. All right. Perfect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take about one ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. There we go. Lemon juice. Done. And I want you to do anywhere between two to two or three bar spoons of amaretto inside of the shaker. One. Two. Uh -huh. Three, you say? Two or three? Three. If you would like to do another one, then do three. Because especially that one, I'm really that amaretto. Why, why uh, that amaretto, Anthony? That amaretto was amazing. I actually had to make my own amaretto. I thought I had some, but um, my girlfriend drank it all when she made an amaretto sour the last night. I didn't know. <laughs> but <laughs> but that amaretto, I actually love that because I, I love um, that one. Lazzaroni is it's very rich. Very, very rich. So now we're going to go to our scotch. We're going to go to our Johnny Walker. Okay. Now, I'm not a big scotch drinker. I believe that the blended scotches are the best way to start because they're a lot more smoother than the single malts. So this will, this is, so this is going to contribute to be, being a more smooth type of drink. So now, what I want you to do is I want you to measure one ounce of Johnny Walker Black on one side of the jigger. Okay. That inside. And now I want you to measure a half, half, half the other side and pour that inside as well. We're going to take a piece of our shaker and we're going to put two scoops of ice inside. 
There we go. That much ice. This is all we do here. Now, uh, what we do with the tall glass is we're going to fill this one up with ice. Okay. Now, let's set that aside. Got right. it. Now, I want you to shake this for about 10 seconds, all right? I'll do my best. Anthony, can you rate and judge Steve's shaking skills? How was that? That was great. I mean, well, I was just copying you, so that's pretty good. Usually I shake like this. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. The two hander and to the side is always a good yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. You never want to shake towards the guests. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Good point. So now we're going to take our cup, we're going to remove the cap, and we're going to strain right over our ice. All right. You went long on the ice on that one. You There's a lot of ice in here. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Because what we're gonna do now, we got one more step. We got one. Oh, more right. Step. Excellent. We got one more step. So you have tonic water at home, right? I sure do. I want you to take your bar spoon and then I want you to put it inside of the glass, all the way to the bottom. This is something that I like to call the fire pole technique. Uh, if you pour the tonic water on top, it's just gonna sit on top. And what you want to do is you want to carbonate the entire drink. You want the tonic water to flow. So what you want to do is you want to take your tonic water and you want to pour right along the spoon. You want to put the lip onto the spoon and pour right down. It'll go right to the bottom of the drink. Right. Let's, let's see how this works. I've never done this. All right. Let's, what could go wrong here? I never knew that. That's interesting. Yeah. This way you don't have to stir it up or anything. It'll just... <laughs> oh. I've been pouring this like an idiot my whole life. I had no idea you could do that. All right. So do we have to mix it at all now or no? You so have to stir it up? Mix it. You just pull the spoon right out. It, it, do, it did all the mixing for you. I don't know what you want to garnish your drink with, but I'm going to garnish mine with a lime wheel because I always garnish every tonic drink with a lime wheel. How about a nice lemon wheel? Because Perfect. my lime is missing Perfect. it. I wanted to keep it nice and simple for you. I'm a simple kind of guy. All right, and you've made yourself a Johnny Walker meet Tom Collins. Drink. That's pretty. Anthony. Look at that. How nice that looks. Anthony, how did he do? He did great. I, I really like that. Uh, you know, I instruct all the time, and it's hard for me to get people to actually do the right thing. But over the over over the phone, over Skype, he did very well. Cheers. Awesome. That's heavenly. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, refreshing. I like that. Yeah. And uh, I, that's why I wanted to. I wanted to throw that um, amaretto, that amaretto curveball in there, so that way it kind of gives it a little bit of complexity and adds to the Asian of the scotch. I think for only a few ingredients, there's a lot of uh, definitely a lot of flavor. Yeah. Good. Yeah. good. I'm glad you like it, Steve. Cheers. Cody, you're up. What are we making? Cool. Steve, you excited? I, I can't wait. I've learned so Good. much already. So we're going to be making a fun little cocktail today. It's going to be perfect for summer. I know you like something that's not too fruity. You want something a little herbaceous. So we're really going to play into your flavor profiles here. We're going to be using some Johnny Walker Black Scotch, which is going to be beautiful for this cocktail. And then we're going to be adding some fun little spices and fruits. We have some blueberry, some thyme, a little bit of uh, lemon juice. All fresh ingredients that you should have at home. Then we're going to top it with a little bit of carbonation, and you're going to be the star of this show here. This is going to be your gig. I'm just showing you how to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to build everything in our tin, okay? So we're going to start off with our Johnny Walker Black. So we're going to have our scotch. I'm going to open it up. I have a fresh bottle right here. Great. So we're going to add a full shot. So it looks like you have about one and a half ounces on that top. So you're going to fill it all the way to the top. I'm going to do the same on mine. And now we're going to start adding some really fun stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some blueberries. Do you have any fresh blueberries on hand? I do, as a matter of fact. So what I would say to do, Steve, is you're going to take like a palmful, about like 10 or 15. You can just put them right into your hand. Then we're just going to drop them right inside. Perfect. Done. Great. We're going to add some acid to this as well. So we're going to take some lemon. So you have a fresh lemon on hand? Yes, sir. Great. So we're going to cut that guy in half and we're going to squeeze both halves. So one lemon 
just so you know, a lemon typically yields, depending on the size, about an ounce of full liquid. So anytime you're doing a recipe and you want to add any type of acid, a lime and a lemon yield around about an ounce of liquid. So you're going to do one full lemon inside. And just out of curiosity, what's been your go-to quarantine drink so far while you've been home? Uh, really has been gin on the rocks. Okay. Uh, Are you, I'm excited because, for you to have a new cocktail to be able to drink. Johnny Walker. Well, as the quarantine goes on, I run out of uh, ingredients. So I'm trying to, you know, make that last over time now. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Lemon Great. juice is in. Great. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our sugar syrup. So we have a simple syrup. It's equal parts, one cup water to one cup sugar. We're going to add that directly in. We're going to add a half of an ounce. We don't want to make it too sweet because uh, I know you don't like sweet and fruity type drinks. So we're just going to have a little bit of sweetness to cut the scotch and then also a little bit of the acidity in there as well. Hey, Cody, you, I noticed that you had your uh, lemon juice already squeezed. How long can you store lemon juice after you squeeze it in a bottle like that? Yeah, so if you're going to squeeze fresh lemon juice, you really can only hold it for about a day or two and still, until it starts to turn. My recommendation, which most people don't have, is to add some citric acid. It helps keep it shelf stable. Um, but what you can do is squeeze it fresh and then put it right into the freezer. And that way, whenever you're ready to use it, you can just always pull it out and it'll hold in the freezer for as long as you need. So here's the fun part. Do you have a muddler on hand? All, All right. right, so I, I have a big spoon. Will that work? That'll absolutely work. So all we right. take out our frustration from quarantine and just muddle it down a little bit, all right? Okay. Just break down the blueberries. You're not like smashing them to a pulp. You're just breaking them down. We want to bring out the essence of the fruit. All right. Before we start to shake it up, so we're going to add some fresh herb. I think it's, you know, summer's coming in, and we want to use all the beautiful ingredients that are fresh. We're going to add some fresh thyme. Thyme. I'm here. to show you a really fun trick. So if you take your thyme and you hold it from the top of it, you can actually strip down all the leaves. You just pull the opposite direction, and you'll get all the leaves that'll strip right off and come into the shaker. Yeah, so you don't have to have the bitter strains inside of the drink, which is nice. How, much, how many um, sprigs should I use? Just two sprigs. Just get two sprigs in there. And you can smell that thyme. It's super herbaceous and floral. It's delicious. I'm ready. You need to do a little exercise. I know I haven't gotten out much, so this is really how I stay in shape. So I'm going to give you my quarantine gym regimen. We're gonna shake up our cocktail. So fill your tin with about six or seven cubes of ice. And Steve, just to know, it's really important, it's really important that we don't add our ice before we start adding our ingredients. We wanna control the dilution of the drink. If you have ice in there and we add liquid to the ice, it begins to sweat and it's really hard to control the amount of water that we put into our drink. So the dilution is gonna be really important, okay? So yeah, I didn't know that. I always put my ice in first and then add all the ingredients. Ah, save it for the end. Yeah, that's right, so, good idea. Shake together, but um, what I'm going to ask you to do is, I, I've seen your shake, I'm quite impressed, but we're going to step it up a notch, okay? All right, let's do it. I'm going to do my signature chicken wing shake, and I'm going to ask you to try and replicate it. You ready? Uh, yeah, sure, let's try it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. <laughs> do you have a rocks glass on hand? Uh, I, I do. Or any, short, or any short glass, that is absolutely perfect. Great. So we're going to fill our glass with just a little bit of ice. All right. All right. Tiny bit, like two or three cubes. Great. Great. We're going to strain inside. Beautiful. You got like a nice red rosy color, yeah? I sure do. Good. And then last but not least, we're going to add just a little bit of uh, ginger ale. I know you have some soda at home, correct? I do. Ginger ale or uh, uh, club soda? Club soda. Uh, let's do ginger ale. We're just going to add some ginger notes to this drink. It's going to go really nice with the scotch and the blueberries and the thyme. So you're just going to just a touch on top, not a lot. And then you're going to fill the rest with ice again. All right. Beautiful. So this is going to be... The final crescendo of our cocktail. We're going to garnish this. So grab the thyme that you have and the blueberries. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the thyme first. It's going to add a really nice nose to the drink as we take a sip. So you're just going to take a few like this, take a pinch, and then you're just going to stick it on the side. Stick. Yeah. yeah. And then we're just going to put a few blueberries. So as we drink it, we'll get lucky and hopefully we'll have them. Well, that's really the goal of drinking is getting lucky, I think. 
<laughs> exactly. So this is our time for a walk cocktail. We have Johnny Walker Black Scotch. We have lemon, simple syrup, blueberries, some thyme, and a splash of ginger ale. Cheers. Let me know what Cheers. you think. I mean, come on. Ooh, yeah. I definitely get all the, the notes. I think that's the right word to use. The thyme, the blueberry, and the yeah, and then Johnny Walker. That's good. Right? You want to sit outside and sip on this guy? Yeah, I could definitely see, like, if I had a porch, I would drink this on the porch and, like, yell at kids and stuff. This is really good. <laughs> right? Well, I'm impressed. You did a really great job. Hey, thanks. I learned something every day. I know. Okay, Steve, time to, uh, the hardest part is going Oof. to be picking, uh, picking a winner, picking a victor. Uh, which would you want to order a second round of? That's a really tough call. I think um, they're both obviously very good. I, I think I would select this one as, as my, um, my choice. I would drink more of this over time. <laughs> so a Anthony's the winner. A, b a big congrats oh. to Anthony. Um, Steve, uh, I'm, I'm glad you didn't slice your thumb uh, making making the lip wedge. It looked a little close there. Uh, me, me and Cody go back. So um, Co in my book, Cody's always a winner. You know, like he taught me so much in, in this industry. And I just want to say that of all the years of being beat by Cody, um, he's, a, he's always a winner in my book. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you got a win on this one. You deserve it. You know, wanting to give back to everybody, uh, a big thank you, you know, to, to Johnny Walker and to Diageo for helping out with this. Um, right now, Diageo is actually running a really awesome uh, social pledge. Diageo will donate $1 up to $1 million uh, to charities, including the U.S. Bartenders Guild. Uh, every time someone shares any cocktail image uh, with the hashtags tips from home and Diageo donation, you have to use both hashtags to qualify. And for more info, uh, check the link below. Big thanks to Cody and, and Anthony and Steve for participating today. And we're going to have the drink recipes coming up right after this. So check those out. And thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.